Hello everyone, the best looking absent friend is here and we are going to give you another Disney Villainous Guide. Well, it's finally happened, absent friends. I've become so handsome and popular that I've decided to retire my video channel and spend the rest of my days in the beautiful people's club. Who did that? Well, I must admit, I'm still not as beautiful as the conceited, male chauvinistic, boorish, and rude Gaston. It's not right for a woman to read. Soon she starts getting ideas and thinking. Gaston, you are positively primeval. <laughs> Thank you, Belle. In this video, we will be looking at all the cards in Gaston's deck with a few tips on how to play them or not play them, as the case may be. We will also be looking at Gaston's fate deck for anyone who may want some tips and tricks on how to effectively keep him from winning the game. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be alerted when new episodes are available. To win his guest on, he must remove all eight obstacles from his realm. Finally, no more start your turn garbage. Who keeps pushing that buzzer? So what kind of allies does Gaston have to help him remove these obstacles and finally marry the love of his life, Belle? Although I don't know why he wants to marry her. She has the hots for that beast, dude. I mean, have you seen him? Gross. Oh, shut up. Okay, back to the allies. He has a total of seven. Four wolves, one Monsieur Dark, one The Mob, and one LeFou. Let's start with the wolves. These precious little canines cost one power to play and have a strength of one. However, they gain plus one for every other wolf in the realm. Not just location, but the whole realm. Play them as soon as possible and play one to each location. Next, Monsieur Dark. This creepy guy costs one power to play and has a strength of one. His strength is irrelevant as he should never be used in a vanquish action. He should, however, be activated to remove obstacles from the realm. Play him ASAP and activate every chance Gaston gets. Next up, the mob. These torch-wielding maniacs cost two power to play and have a strength of four. They can vanquish almost any hero in the fate deck, but hold off on playing them to a location unless LeFou is there. Speaking of whom, LeFou. This puny little pipsqueak costs two power to play and has a strength of two. He also has the very useful ability of returning to Gaston's hand after being used in a vanquish action. Not only that, but he will also return the other allies used in the same vanquish action. Be sure not to play him until there is a hero to vanquish. Remember, Gaston does not have any move ally slash item actions on his board, so moving allies around after they are played can be tricky. That's all his allies. Now let's move on to his items. He only has one item, but two copies. Five dozen eggs. This item costs four power to play and gets attached to any ally to give them plus two strength. What kind of Fakakta card is that? Who would spend four power to give an ally plus two strength? This has got to be not only the worst card in Gaston's deck, but maybe the worst card in the entire villainous game. If you press that buzzer one more time, you're gonna be in so much trouble. Let's move on to his effects. Hopefully they are more useful. He has a total of 18. Three swoon, two intimidating, two time to follow me, two bell is mine, two hunter's instinct, two take me instead, two come into the light, one show me the beast, one, temper, and one, get out. Let's break them down, starting with Swoon. For the cost of one power, Gaston must replace one obstacle, and then he may either gain three power or draw three cards. Since it costs one power to play this card, it's really only gaining two power. 
That part could be tempting as Gaston does not have any gain three power actions in his realm. But the better action is to draw three cards. If Gaston can easily remove the obstacle that had to be replaced, go ahead and play this card. However, don't hang on to it if it can't be used right away. Up next, Intimidating. For one power, Gaston will reveal cards from his deck until an ally is revealed. That ally goes into his hand and the other cards are discarded. Be careful not to play this card if Gaston's obstacle removing effects are still in his deck. This card could force him to discard them. Play this effect only if those other cards have already been drawn and discard it if it comes out too early. Next, time to follow me. Also for one power, Gaston can perform a move ally slash item action. If Gaston has played his allies smartly, then this card should go right into the discard pile. Only use it if things are desperate, right? Thank you. Next, Bell is Mine. Another one power card. This allows Gaston to perform a vanquish action. Since Gaston already has two vanquish actions on his board, and don't you even think about pressing that buzzer this time, I want a bell. This card is completely useless. <laughs> Next, Hunter's Instincts. This effect costs three power and lets Gaston defeat a hero with the strength of three or less. This card is a big maybe. If there are heroes in the way of removing obstacles and there are no allies to do the job, then this card could be worth it. But at such a high power cost, it's really situational. Next, take me instead. This free-to-play card lets Gaston reveal cards from his fate deck until a hero is revealed. That hero will be played to Beast Castle and then Gaston may remove one obstacle. This card is very tricky to play. If Bell gets played, Gaston won't be able to remove the obstacle at the end of the card, so that's bad. But if a hero comes out that allows Gaston to move other heroes around to better locations, that's good. If a hero comes out that will remove obstacles after they are defeated, that's even better. So, eh. Next, come into the light. For the cost of three power, Gaston may remove two obstacles from one location. Play this card. Don't wait, just play it. Later, we'll discuss the best order to remove obstacles from the realm. Next, show me the beast. Now pay close attention to this one. For two power, and if the beast is in play, Gaston may remove one obstacle. If Bell is in play, Gaston must replace one obstacle. And if both are in play, Gaston gains two power. Since he just spent two power on this card, he gets nothing from that part of it. Use this card to remove obstacles only. Why, oh why, would anybody play this card to replace an obstacle? This pretty face cannot understand the logic behind this card. I told you about that buzzer, don't you buzz me again. I'm gonna get you in the parking lot when this is over. Next, temper. For two power, Gaston can remove one obstacle. Play this card. That's it. Next. And the last effect is Get Out. For five power, Gaston can remove three obstacles. Once again, play this card. Wow, Gaston has some rotten cards in his deck. But before we move on to the conditions, let's discuss which obstacles to remove first. Always remove the ones from the tavern and the woods before Bell's house or Beast's castle. There are heroes that allow Gaston to remove obstacles from these outer locations just from a simple vanquish action. Also, remove all obstacles from one location before moving on to the next one. Alright, hopefully his conditions will make up for this rotten deck. He has only one, but three copies. Beautiful as me. If another player uses four or more actions in one turn, Gaston may remove one obstacle. Whoa, that's... Whoa. Okay, so this is probably the best card in the deck. Almost every other villain in the game will be using four actions, 
So hang on to this card and pay close attention to what the other players are doing. This card even has the potential to have Gaston win the game even while it is another player's turn. That's pretty awesome. Oh, what do you know? Well, that's it for Gaston's crappy villain deck. Now on to his fate deck. Let's start with the heroes. First up, Mrs. Potts and Chip. This one strength T set may let the Fator move any and all heroes or fate items to a new location. Not the best fate card by any stretch, but if there are heroes about to be squashed by allies, she can move them out of harm's way. Remember, Gaston cannot move his allies around the realm very easily. Next up, Cogsworth. This little clock has a strength of two and can enhance all the heroes in his location by plus one. Unless there are other heroes out to give the strength boost to, play the other fate card instead. Next up, Maurice. This wacky inventor has two strength, and when he is played, the Fator will find his invention and attach it to him or another hero at the same location that Maurice is played to. Be careful when playing him because when he is vanquished, Gaston will remove all obstacles from Belle's house. And only having two strength, that won't be difficult to do. Usually not a wise fate selection, but if he must be played, try to use his invention to prevent vanquishing of more powerful heroes. More on that later. Next up, Belle. This peculiar girl has a strength of two, and when she is in play, no obstacles can be removed. Keep her in the realm as much as possible. If she gets defeated, try and get her back as soon as possible. And yes, there are effects that can help with that. Next, Lumiere. This three-strength candelabra can move any hero to any new location. Just like Mrs. Potts, only play him if there is another hero that needs to be moved away from dangerous allies. And our final hero, Beast. When this six-strength hero is played to a location, all the allies currently in that location are moved to another location. If he is vanquished, Gaston may remove all the obstacles at Beast's castle. Since he is much tougher to defeat, playing him can be very advantageous, especially if the Fator can move him around and move the allies away from him and even away from other delicate heroes. Before we move on, let's check the priority of which actions to cover. First, cover that activate action to make Monsieur Dark useless. Then cover the discard action to make it more difficult for Gaston to cycle his deck. Next, cover his extra vanquish action. And finally, cover his second fate action. Now let's check out his fate items. He has only one, Maurice's Invention. This machine can be attached by any hero and will reduce the strength of all allies in the same location. It will more than likely come out with Maurice, but try to attach it to either Belle or the Beast. If there is a better fate card to play, of course, play it instead. And now for his fate effects. Be our guest. With this card, the Fator can retrieve any hero from the fate discard pile. Use this to keep Belle in the realm or the beast if she is unavailable. Otherwise, play a hero that allows the movement of other heroes in the realm or just play the other fate card. Since there are two copies of this in the fate deck, a better opportunity will hopefully come up later. The next effect is Magic Mirror. This shiny object lets the Fator find and play the beast. Afterwards, the Fate discard pile, including the Magic Mirror, gets reshuffled back into the Fate deck. This is a pretty solid card, but definitely not the best. The Fator may want to play one of the upcoming effect cards, such as... I've never seen so many books. This effect allows the Fator to replace one obstacle. Always replace obstacles. So play this card when it appears. Next, massaging my feet. This effect will replace two obstacles. The only way to stop Gaston from winning is replace obstacles. So... Yeah, replace the obstacles. Next, saving my life. This effect will replace all obstacles in one location. Replace the obstacles in either the tavern or the woods, or whichever location has all obstacles missing at the time. 
Next, it is you. Yada yada yada, replace one obstacle in each location. This has the potential of replacing four obstacles in one go. Go ahead and play this card even if it only replaces a few. And the last effect is the rose. This card allows the Fator to play the other fate card drawn. Discard the rose and then draw two more fate cards and play them both. Use this card at every opportunity since it will greatly increase the chance of drawing the obstacle replacers. Don't worry about the removal of one obstacle because more than likely, Bell will either be out or be drawn during this action and will negate the removal altogether. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone found this video informative and maybe even picked up a few pointers on how to better play Gaston or play against Gaston. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Keep watching this channel for more Disney Villainous Guides. But before we go, let me know in the comments which Disney villain is your least favorite. I'm your absent friend, signing off. All right, that does it. Who keeps pressing that buzzer? I demand to know who is responsible for driving me up the wall with that kind of